Thank you, Speaker. Um, Dr. Karanja, listening to you and the comments that uh, most of my colleagues have raised about agriculture being devolved, and even you saying that the extension services of the counties are dead, it is because the Ministry of Agriculture at the national level, you're also involving yourself in devolved matters than doing your work which is, should mostly be policy and collaborating with the counties to see that those policies are implemented and those extension services are working. Because I do not understand why the county government are providing seeds, they are doing, you know, they are providing all that to the, to, to, to the farmers, but fertilizer, you keep it at, at Kilimo. Is it a cash cow for the minister, for the PS, for the cartels there? Why are you leaving fertilizer at the national level instead of dealing with matters uh, policy, which is your main core mandate? And when you talk about functions being devolved, resources should then follow those functions so that then the county governments are able to work and not the money remaining here in, um, in, in the capital in Nairobi. The second issue is the issue of uh, livestock farming. We talk about coffee, for, uh, coffee uh, sector reforms, tea sector reforms, even pyrethrum and cotton, and cotton have a board. Livestock we do not have in this country. People who wake up every morning thinking and uh, implementing issues to do with livestock. Botswana is one of the best countries in livestock farming implemented by Kenyans. They're the ones who went to do uh, livestock issues in Botswana. So I want to know what you're going to do to see, to eat, that um, uh, livestock farming is taken seriously instead of taxing Kenyans, make money through livestock farming. Lastly, on the Livestock Bill 2024, what will you do as a cabinet secretary to communicate properly what it is all about because we are already seeing a lot of things flying right, left and centre. What strategies will you make uh, put in place to ensure you communicate uh, to the public efficiently on the Livestock Bill 2024 and taking their views in. Thank you. Yes, nominee. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Raisuda. The, the issue about, yes, interfering with the, 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 the mandate of the national government and the, the intergovernmental. I would just like to say that if I'm nominated, I approved by this committee, I'm a firm believer in um, devolution. As I said earlier, if, it, if you want sustainable development of agriculture, the counties have to take their role seriously, and they have to work. They have to work. There is no other way. I'm a development economist, and I know that if you don't have structure, the institutional framework to support you to do a sustainable development, it will never work. So the counties have to take their mandate. They have to take their roles, give those services. The national government have to take the, its role of uh, the, the ministry of where I'm going, if I am approved, the role of policy, the role of regulatory and also research. Those are the mandates which are to the national government. But the counties have to take that role. And I will do whatever will be in my power to make sure that those delineation and, those, and that it becomes very clear. In terms of even uh, fertilizer, that's why I said eventually, gradually, uh, the, the way to go is to devo you know, make sure that you decentralize. The procurement is, should not be done centrally. It should be done with agro dealers. Those are business people who can be able to do procurement, and they, they do it a part, as part of their business. The government can come in and subsidize and give the vouchers. So I, I am, as I indicated, and I would like to repeat again, I am a firm believer in uh, that issue about uh, sustainable development through counties. Livestock. Yes, livestock is a very critical area. It is one of the, 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 the critical areas because the, if I'm approved, I will have, I'll have two state departments, agriculture and livestock. And livestock is a great, has a great potential in terms of being able to, the livelihoods, especially in uh, asal areas. And uh, Honorable Member Isuda is to say that uh, I'm lucky that uh, when I'm coming in, if I come in, there is a rice stock bill which has been published and the rice stock policy which has been published. So the rice stock bill is trying to cure the, 
the lacuna which was there in that it, they, we did not have agencies which are promoting livestock matters in the country. So it will create, for instance, try to regulate what is happening in breeding, animal feeds, which you know, members know that there are a lot of issues with animal feeds, uh, quality and others. Uh, create a livestock marketing board, which will be promoting livestock. A research organization dedicated to livestock, although it is between Carol and institutes. Uh, some of uh, I was surprised to learn that some of the institutes in livestock, like Ahiti, which we know, don't have legal status. They are just they are created by. So the livestock bill is trying to do that, and there are issues which are coming through. I know uh, misinformation, which you would be dealing with, so that when it comes for the, the, the necessary uh, hearings and the public hearing. Those, those issues are dealt with. So I think there is, there is uh, I will give it a, a, a lot of priority, the livestock bill, and the, so that by the time, maybe by next year, we will have some of these institution, institutions in place. Thank you. Mayor now. Thank you, Chair, Chairman. Uh, my question to the nominee. The country has suffered recurrent drought flooding uh, as uh, occasioned by climate change. In the process, we've lost a lot of livestock through starvation, millions of livestock. We've also lost crops uh, through flooding. Some are washed away. Even the crops that manage to survive do not perform well because of too much water. My question is, what mitigation measures can you put in place to reduce the loss of livestock in, uh, during future droughts. Uh, what compensation measures or strategies would you be able to put in place? Because we know that we have livestock insurance, at least areas uh, of livestock farmers can be compensated. What about crops, farmers that lose crops? What, what are your thoughts? Secondly, in the agricultural sector, we have so many youths who are trained, degrees in agriculture, even PhD in agriculture, extension officer trained, but jobless. So many of them. I don't know if you're aware of that. And we need to be deliberate in employment creation if you are uh, successful and, and, uh, and you become the Minister of Agriculture, what deliberate measures are you going to put in place to ensure that you deliberately placing resources in programs that will create opportunities for these young people? Thank you. Daoud. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, to the nominee, he has mentioned he has been in the coffee sector in the task force. What I would want to put to him is the coffee sector is in turmoil. Prices and theft at the coffee factories are rampant. Uh, we need to probably develop new varieties and value addition for coffee. What would be your position on that? Secondly, um, the Kenya Kwanzaa government, I believe, they talked about guaranteed minimum returns. And uh, I've seen you have worked with the Kilimo Biashara as well. What would be your take on guaranteed minimum returns for all our products? Lastly, there is a bill um, I'm co-sponsoring, the livestock theft bill, uh, which is in uh, Parliament. Apparently, uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Livestock has got what is coming up, but instead of them bringing it to Parliament, they say that has to stop before we bring ours. So when you, if you do get confirmed, would you be willing even to be assisted by members of Parliament bringing bills and not stopping bills? because the ministry is going to bring 
when it is going to bring you we do not know so those are the few things i would want you to answer go thank ahead uh, dr karanja okay thank you mr speaker uh, honorable mary the issue about livestock and the climate change climate change is a is a definite threat to agriculture and many other sectors including energy and others and it has to be dealt with it have to measures have to be taken and in particular when you go to livestock especially where it is practiced in uh, the arid and semi-arid areas that is where climate change is becoming a big a big issue due to uh, the persistent droughts and we have to invest in uh, mitigation and adaptation measures in those areas for instance it is if you go to the northeast uh, counties Sioro, Mwajiam and others you realize that over time the pastoralists have sta started to realize that uh, con pasture conservation is one of the areas which they can invest in they used to graze and then go but through interventions through various programs you can now see hay being sold in those areas. So some of these mitigation measures are going to, to be there, especially to change their lifestyle, they, they, so that they don't, they, they adopt measures like uh, uh, pasture conservation. And uh, if approved, I'm going to promote programs which you do the adaptation, and, uh, and, and uh, for, especially for livestock sector. For crops, it's also the same. We need measures which uh, varieties which are resistant or uh, drought tolerant, uh, varieties which are higher, higher temperature, can we start higher temperatures. So that, as the docket of research is within my mandate, uh, if approved, I will also emphasize on that. We have also to take, uh, for instance, the, the Kenya Kwanza agenda of planting trees. That is one area where we need to, 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 to emphasize. Because trees, agroforestry, and others is one of the measures which we can be able to uh, mitigate the, the effects of the climate change. Then, in agriculture, in agriculture, I'll also be working closely, if I'm approved, with my counterparts in irrigation. Our agriculture is rain fed, it is prone to the vulgaries of the weather. So, we need to invest where we can, with resources allowing. We need to invest in irrigation so that we, emphasize, we, we expand the area of the irrigation, small scale irrigation programs, which can be able to support farmers so that they, they are not uh, caught by this, uh, uh, the, the, the issue about climate change. Then I think uh, insurance. At the final end of the day, because this is a risk, we need to emphasize both crop and livestock insurance so that farmers are able to be compensated whenever there is an occurrence of uh, that calamity which occurs. Issue about the youth. I, I, I indicated earlier that, uh, yes, I'm quite aware of this particular challenge of jobless youth in the country, in the rural areas, and everywhere else. And uh, my, if I'm approved, my undertaking is that in whatever we are doing in, the, in, the, in, the, in all the value chains. The issue about the youth, women, PWDs, uh, people with living with disabilities, you'll be taken care of. Not just taken care of, but uh, we will go out of our way to make sure that and monitor clearly that we are taking care of the youth, the women, and people with disability. Honorable Daoud, the coffee industry, uh, I, as you have rightfully indicated, I started my career there as a, an economist. I have also served in the task force and other. Yes, I know there are issues, very major issues in the coffee industry, uh, including uh, legislative one, the bill, the policy which are still pending. This will be low hanging fruits. I will be able to handle them if I'm approved so that we move forward. Uh, new varieties and uh, theft. I work with collaboration with, uh, especially for theft, I work with the collaboration with the, with the interior so that uh, we are able to see how best 
we can handle the coffee deaths. Because the coffee deaths are usually um, promoted and uh, kind of uh, gotten mainly from maybe insider jobs or people who have licenses who can be able to dispose of the coffee. Because you cannot buy coffee. Where do you take it? It has to be that you have a license, you can be able to dispose. So it is something which, uh, with working together with the Ministry of Interior, we will be able to handle. So I will approach it from the policy uh, point of view, having the policy and the, I'm also aware that there is a coffee bill, which is before uh, Parliament or Senate. I'm, not, I, I'm here to take the position very well. So I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and uh, do whatever it takes to make sure that that is done. Minimum guarantee returns for farmers. This is all the campaign and uh, Kenya Kwanza in the plan. It needs to be looked into because it involves a lot of, uh, from an economic point of view, it involves a lot of resources. In terms of if you want to guarantee the coffee, tea, you want to guarantee maize, you want. So this one I would say that if I am approved, I will set up the necessary structures to make sure that I get a good a professional advice on this particular issue and the, way we, the best way to go forward. But I know it is very important to our farmers. The, it was uh, in the plan, the Kenya Kwanza plan, so we have to move forward, but cautiously so that we are not uh, given our financial situation, that we, we don't overcommit. The rice stock and the bills, I, I would like to, to handle it from where you, uh, Honorable Daoud, you said, as a, if I'm approved as a cabinet secretary, working with the National Assembly and Senate and every, every members of national, the, the honorable members, whenever a bill, you don't have to oppose a bill because it is coming from another quarter. If it is something which is good, it is bringing something of value on the table, the best approach will be you look and you consult and you do the consultation so that you agree on a common position. You, you improve on what you have. If it is a bill brought by a private member's motion, you see what is bringing on the table. If the ministry has something else to add, you add. So it is a collaborative effort. I would approach it that way. Ferdinand. Thank you very much. Dr. Karanja, um, you have promised, and please go by that promise, that if you, you are actually approved by this house, then of course you're going to put some workable and uh, various interventions in the system to be able to move forward as a sector, agricultural sector. One, I want to ask you, what are you going to do? We have failed. There are some projects you actually failed. Kalana Gulalu is one of them that uh, uh, this house or that of the parliament actually put in a lot of efforts, but it is failed. I want you to tell me what you are going to do. Of course, you are saying the moment you are, we approve you, you're going to get some of the things that um, are failed. Two, out here, and I think it's a common knowledge. There's a lot of uh, land uh, fragmentation, they're cutting land, you know, to reducing the workable land. Agricultural land is actually being subdivided. I'm afraid 20 years to come, maybe you and I won't be there. 20 years to come, there'll be no land for cultivation in this country. And um, I think uh, I had a chance to go to some of the places like uh, Denmark, where land is actually put aside. So what are you going to do about that uh, to be able to at least uh, stop this fragmentation of the land, uh, subdividing, of course, if, if I have like four children, each one of them must have a piece of land. Lastly, and not least, the most important thing is that agriculture. You have um, promised, and I hope you will live up to your promise. This irrigation, irrigation in this country, I don't know who did this, is misplaced. Is in blue economy. What do you irrigate in blue economy? Blue economy is water. Are you going to have an effort to bring it to agriculture? 
because I think irrigation is actually um, uh, supposed to be irrigating the products, crops, but not the blue economy. I, are you going to again, um, given uh, by your background, bring it back to uh, agriculture? I think uh, the others insurance, you have talked about insurance. I, th I don't want to repeat it, but I think the best you do is that uh, there's a lot of uh, crop failures. And, and uh, Ferdinand, irrigation is not in blue economy. The blue economy. It's in water. Water, water but water is a blue economy. No, so, yeah. they are different. But we there, is a minister, there is a minister of mining, maritime. blue economy, and maritime. maritime. Yes. No, I, then I have think water, irrigation, let, let, let's, and sanitation. Let's get, let's get Dr. Tari to see your view. Because irrigation was in agriculture. It was moved from agriculture. So I want him to saying. grab it back. Yeah, I want it back. I want to. It has to come back because what do you get in water? Eh? No, mm. the, of course he can. Uh, through him, he can bring a motion, whatever it is, if he is approved. Yeah, to bring it to agriculture because what you, you know, it is misplaced. Uh, Thank you, Morugara. Sorry. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And Dr. Karanja, uh, there is a lot of theory in agriculture, especially to encourage youngsters to study agriculture and economics with such catchphrases like agriculture is the backbone of the economy of the country. That is in agriculture and in economics, it's the biggest employer and it should be sustained, etc., etc. When you look at the level of unemployment in the country today, why would it be at such high level if it were the greatest employer? It means the policies regarding agriculture vis-a-vis -vis the young people we are educating do not match. Number two, it means the youngsters do not take agriculture to be any form of gainful employment. It's dirty. It doesn't have good income and all that. What policies would you put in place to ensure that we have a mindset change to the youngsters to know that agriculture can actually be that employer which is income generating? And if we were to do this, then the next question is, we as a country presided over the killing of some of our best cash crops in the country away from coffee and tea including cotton cotton was doing very well in the arid and semi-arid areas but we elected to have mutumba coming in as a result of which cotton almost got dissipated sunflower another cash crop which was doing very well in those areas we watched as we brought in edible oil from other countries and the crop went down what policies would you put in place to ensure that cotton sunflower are revived as our cash crops which would actually reverse the trend of importation of either very ex expensive clothes from turkey um, china and everywhere else or the second hand clothes which are flocking in from all over the world and also edible oils that are coming from uh, the Asian countries, while actually we can sustain that ourselves. And not lastly, we have the other food cash crops, which we grow. The, f the, the crops are food, but basically if you check their mode of production, they are cash crops. And I'll give you examples. One of them is gadam sorghum, which is supposed to be consumed by the brewers. It's also a food crop. Another one is the mang beans, the dengo in the eastern Kenya. It's supposed to be a food crop, but it is produced as a cash crop by the farmers. The cartels we were talking about are now able to go around it, import those crops from the neighboring countries, as a result of which the prices become extremely miserable and to some extent throw away. What policies would you put in place to ensure that those crops are sustained in the country and their prices are improved so that farmers 
are encouraged to continually grow these crops for economic purposes. Finally, livestock. Livestock is supposed to be one of the most lucrative agricultural endeavors or enterprises we undertake, including export. But it surprises us that even the quarters we are given Leave alone Europe, which refuses to accept our beef on the basis that, as the deputy speaker put it, we use drugs to treat these animals, which drugs are banned in their countries. So when they do their tests, they say this meat does not qualify for our consumption. But the Asian countries are more than willing to accept our beef products. How come? As a country, we are not able to meet our quotas when actually we are capable of even overdoing it because of the areas that are arid and semi-arid. What policies would you put in place to ensure that livestock is also sustained along those lines? Yes, Dr. Karanja, that's quite a mouthful. Thank you, Mr. And Speaker. you respond to all those very important issues from yes. Ferdinand to Morgara. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. From Ferdinand, uh, thank you, Ferdinand, for your Honourable Ferdinand, for your question on uh, the field projects, the Garana Kuraru. I know this is has been in the in the works, has been there for some time. The coming from where I come from, I, as I indicated, I, is that if I am approved, I have worked in programs and projects, and one of the areas where you do is to do an evaluation, clear evaluation with economic analysis. If it is not working, it is not working. If it is working, then you, you can see what are the lessons learned and you go ahead. So I would, I would well, if I am approved, one of the areas which I would do without throwing away the, the baby with the bathwater is to do a carded evaluation of that program, of that project. If it is not working, then we get advisory, we move away and we see how the best to get out or to continue. So it, and that is just an example of Guraru Kuraru. We will do for others, which are, we feel that they are not delivering, they are not getting value for money. Subdivision of land. I know this is uh, beyond uh, agriculture alone, because yes, agriculture is the biggest user of land in the country. And uh, what, if I am approved, what I will do is uh, I will engage the sector of, of land because we are supposed to have a rad use policy, clear rad use policy which delineates areas where you can do agriculture, areas where you can do uh, housing, areas where you can do other things so that we are able to delineate those areas. So if this is a collaborative effort with the um, uh, sector of land. Because I'm sure uh, and, and honourable members are aware, we are losing a sizable number, a sizable, you know, a sizable uh, proportion of agricultural land to real estate in Kiambu and other areas, and this uh, are go causing a lot of concern. Even in other in other counties, we are doing the same. So it is an area where we are uh, engage the sector of lands to see to come up with clearly with the, I, I am. I know there is a, a radius policy, but we need to revisit it and see how we can implement it. Irrigation, as it has been indicated, this is in the water sector. And uh, this, I'm sure, is uh, an issue which uh, our appointing authority will, this is, you assist to that. And I don't want to comment more than that. Honorable Murungal, about, uh, thank you for your question. Point of order. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, Ferdinand. Dr. Tari, yeah. you actually are very knowledgeable from what you have said. Don't tell us, don't throw the, uh, so that this mumble, the, the, the question of um, irrigation is a, it's something that you go to uh, tell this, this committee what you're going to do. Don't tell us that somebody else holds the, you know, the talking of the same thing. You know, we have said and have said it very clearly. Irrigation is supposed to irrigate crops, and somebody misplaced it in water. It's as simple as that. So, what are you going to do about it? Thank you, uh, Honorable, Honorable Fednat. Yes, I agree. Because 
irrigation when you do it the especially the small one not the big dams which you have hydros in in them uh, the, the irrigation we do for small scale is agriculture actually most of it and logically it is supposed to be in agriculture so that you manage uh, because even the technical management of the irrigation scheme yeah it is agriculture the, the water part is as, it just making sure that the water is there so that is why i'm saying because you you know coming in as a cs i would love to have irrigation as one of the dockets but uh, definitely i need to be guided uh, it is not your duty to assign uh, department yes <laughs> Yes. 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 If I may continue, Honorable Murunga. Go on, go on. Go on. Yes, Honorable Murunga, Murunga has, uh, thank you for your questions. The issue about uh, the youth and agriculture. Yes, it is uh, quite something which, uh, because you realize that uh, agriculture has been left to the old people. One of the studies which was done by one of the institutes indicated that, for instance, uh, the average age of a coffee farmer is 62 years. So very aged people. And the issue is about the youth might not want to go into production per se. They might not want to go to production, but what they, might, they, they are interested in is issues to do with the value chain, along the value chain, for instance, in agro-processing, in, uh, in making sure that, for instance, if there is milk, they add value, they, have, they can make yogurt, they can do the, the ghee. So, as indicated earlier, some of the key value chains which has been highlighted and has been prioritized, we will, we will try as much as possible to integrate the issue about the youth. There is also a program I'm um, informed, uh, if I come in, I'd, I'll try to scale it up, trying to inculcate, uh, to teach youth about agriculture, right from the word, from the secondary schools and primary schools, so, so that they have the, mind, the right mindset when they are coming up. Policies, edible oils and uh, imports. I, as I indicated earlier, we are having a big issue about uh, food imports. We are becoming a country of food imports. Edible oils. I was checking the statistics, and uh, you, when you look at uh, petroleum and other, edible oils is featuring very highly in terms of imports. So we need, and it's one of the priorities in the better, which has been prioritized, especially sunflower. So we use accelerate that prog if I am approved, we will accelerate that program to make sure that the farmers have the necessary planting materials for sunflower. They have the necessary planting materials for other edibles, uh, canora and others. And the challenge of also making sure that not only they have the, the, the planting materials, but also they have the technology to get the oil out of the sunflower. Because it's one thing to plant the sunflower, it's another thing to get the oil out of the sunflower. Cash crop, Gadam Sogam, Dengu. Sustainability in the country. Yes, these are particularly good uh, cash crops. Some of them are like Dengu, Gadam Sogam. They, they are a bit drought tolerant and they are grown in areas where, like uh, Lower Eastern, the form of Lower Eastern, Upper Eastern, and other, other uh, Kitui and other Machakos and others. They are good, and they, they are actually very helpful crop because in this era of climate change, they are the ones which are going to, to be the ones which are going to help the farmers to overcome, adapt to some of this. And if necessary, if I'm approved, if there is any exports or any cartels which are trying to curtail this, we will do the necessary legal, what, maybe the rules and the registration, the, the lower rules, to make sure that if there is anything to be, to be curtailed, to control that market, so that they, they remain in the country, they are available for the country. Like I know Gadam Sogam is used for brewing, so they should be able to get access to that for and dengo, so that it's not exported. So I, I, I rely on, uh, the, as a, the CS, the, 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 the mandate I'm given, if I'm approved, 
by the various registration, like the crop lacks, to, to make sure that this happens. Yes, livestock is a major one. And we are <coughs> surprising, honorable members, is that uh, despite the potential, I am believed that uh, we are not able to even meet the demand for non stringent market in the uh, Middle East and other areas, even for sheep and goats. For cattle, they are saying our cattle are, sometimes the numbers are too small, the weight of the animals are too small. Uh, I'm given an example where uh, a market was found in Indonesia. They wanted an, a various number of cattle, but when they, the, the, the technical team went to the field, they could hardly get 10% or 20% of that. Reason? They wanted a, a cattle of a certain weight, which we did not have. Our weight was maybe half what was required in the market. The same with uh, sheep and goats. And I'm told that is a very lucrative market, especially for Middle East. So one of the areas we are if I'm approved is to look at our breeds. The Borana, the Sahai was. The, the bigger ones, so that we are able to distribute this to the farmers so that they are able to to have uh, cattle and uh, breeds which are, can go to that market. There is also the issue about feedlots, making sure that we have community feedlots where they can fatten those animals, they can make them uh, go to the weight which is required. So, so some, such kind of interventions. and. Well, I'm, I'm happy to note that uh, livestock and lead meat is one of the, the priority value chains according to the better. So we'll be able to handle that. Thank you. Owen. Owen Bayer. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would like to, rec to uh, pose the following question to the nominee. He has, I know he has... Uh, uh, we're taking time to explain something on edible oils, which is actually part of my question, and you allow me, it's not repetitive, but from another angle, or a speaker. I would like to say that we, we spent around 160 billion on edible oils, imports. The uh, agricultural budget is around 84.9 billion, thereabout. And uh, a lot of money is actually used there. AFA, the Agricultural Food Authority, has a department uh, on edible oils. But the work that goes in there is probably very limited. Probably they are managing more the imports than actually growing the edible crops in this country. And that's why we get into this. And what, they, what do they get? They make around 2 billion shillings a year for or the tax that is imposed on edible oil. And therefore, we are not solving uh, the problem on edible oils. Uh, in the past, uh, the nominee, uh, crops such as coconut, cashew nuts, ground nuts, crops which are very passionate about because the region I come from actually grows these issues. But they have been neglected completely, completely, such that coconut and cashew nuts are crops that are continue to decline. We have old boughs, we have all the, the old tall uh, uh, coconut trees, and the productivity is shrinking every day. And yet, we continue to import. We have the solution. The coast of Kenya and part of North, uh, uh, the eastern part can grow this macadamia and uh, sim sim, sunflower, all those crops. And it made the people of the coast very rich, and the country got enough revenue. But they've been on the decline, and yet AFA, the department, uh, the area of edible crops, uh, is not doing much. Uh, uh, tell me, what kind of reforms will you bring to reduce the, the, the impulse on edible oil, both legislative and policy, and also increase the production of cashew nuts and coconut so that we can cut down on the budget on uh, uh, oil crops? Uh, secondly, Honorable Speaker, ADC is Agricultural De Development Corporation which is supposed to help the agriculture department. And one of the things that ADC did was to have enough land set aside. I, 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 I had the question on now we are moving to settlement. And, uh, but ADC has swathes of land 
But what has happened for many years, there has not been any protection on this. They've been divided, they've been given out. I know even the ADC in Malindi, they have a huge farm in Malindi, but now they're actually renting their own farm because people grabbed it. Now they land their own, uh, they are actually paying rent on. In terms of policy and legislation, what are you going to do to protect ADC and actually spur the productivity of ADC to ensure that as a country we still anchor ourselves in agriculture and from agriculture to manufacturing and to jobs? I thank you. Robert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the nominee has come out as very brave uh, because there's one answer he gave. I was very impressed when you said that uh, you're willing to even advise in uh, correcting the mess in state departments uh, in the ministry. When you said that uh, you feel that irrigation is misplaced and you will fight for it, that means you're a brave man. Now, I, I want to just point out two things. One which was raised by Honorable um, Naisula on the issue of Botswana, which, which actually exports 95% of its beef products to countries like Norway and the United Arab Emirates. And, 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 and what she said is, is what I want to confirm, that actually uh, they have a Botswana Meat Commission, which was borrowed heavily and, uh, you know, fashioned uh, after Kenya Meat Commission. But years later, while theirs is thriving, Kenya's KMC is actually now in the hands of the military. So, so I don't know, what would you do? Because as a brave person, you must be able to make very serious and tough decisions to bring back that uh, livestock sector to what it, uh, it should be. Now, secondly, the other issue is uh, the issue of corruption in the ministry. Uh, from NCPB and, uh, you know, those state the departments within the ministry. There's a lot of, uh, there's rampant corruption. In fact, I will tell you that uh, at one time, uh, you know, just recently, Kenyans were treated to a circus of, uh, you know, the sale of uh, funny product in the name of fertilizer. And the parliament was actually seized of the matter and tried to handle it. Um, now, there's a gentleman who was my neighbor. This is a real story. And he had uh, a piece of land, five acres. He was actually selling it. We were trying to get a buyer for him. Then he got appointed to the, to the Kenya, uh, Kenya, Kenya Sugar Board. Within a few months, he now started buying off all the neighbors and stopped selling his land. There is a lot of money that gets lost in, 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 our, in our state departments, especially the agricultural one. Now, I've seen that you are worth $214 million. You are going into this uh, sector. All those cartels are there, and they are willing to make you a billionaire within the next three years. <laughs> are you going to be able to resist, Bona nominee? Thank you, Chair. <laughs> yes, Dr. Karanje. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will they make you a billionaire, or you are a billionaire already? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Honorable O and Bayer. For your for your question about this this issue about uh, edibles, yes, this is a classical case of we need to do import substitution. We cannot continue spending our good money importing things we can do in this country. Uh, as I indicated earlier, we the the edible oils is one of the key priorities in better. And we, I will, I, if approved, I have no other alternative but to work day and night to make sure that uh, we reduce the import bill, especially on all the boils. Be it on sunflower, coconut, and cashew nuts, I know they, especially in the coastal zone, these are very good crops, which has been there, naturally growing there, what the farmers are getting the necessary technologies and inputs, and also the, the machinery and technology to get the oil and others. Because edible oils also... You do canora. When you squeeze the oil, the, what is a good uh, industry?